Are you looking for the best television hookup to your PC as a monitor, or perhaps to that new PS5 Xbox Series X? The LG 48 inch, or actually, you know what? The entire CX line is an amazing gaming oriented TV. And in this video, I will be addressing five common comments that the grain tech community has brought up so that you are further informed about maybe purchasing this TV. I am the Grain Tech, a gaming insider, and if you want to improve your gaming performance, start now by clicking that subscribe button. As I mentioned in my previous videos, links in the description below, there are some measures that you're going to have to take if you wanna use the 48 inch version as a monitor, but in my opinion, it is completely worth it as this is the best monitor television for gamers out there. So not to tease you, but these are the five topics I will be covering in this video. It is okay to go down into the time bar to jump around as you see fit. I won't take it personally, I promise. Excuse me. Ken R says, watch the burn-in test. Too much babysitting to keep burn-in from happening for my taste. I will stick with the 43 inch, 144 Hertz, 4K Acer Predator. So specifically, Ken is talking about a video that I will link down in the description section, along with the other videos that I cover the LG CX48. They'll be down there below. Little warning, ignore the first one. It was one of my first tries. We all have to start somewhere. The overall babysitting that you have to do that starts with power management. You see, when you are plugging in a television to your monitor, things don't always work as well as we might like. The automatic off that the TVs normally have won't work because you're always sending a constant signal. Gamers and high performance enthusiasts are also plagued by the fact that sleep mode is uh, unreliable to say the best. This kind of a monitor, you do have to be more cautious about making sure you turn it off because it's a television. It's not going to behave in the same way a traditional monitor would. Additionally, you are trying to avoid burn-in. Now, I have about a thousand hours in this television and I do not have any burn-in. And I will be going over that later in the video. I do have to save something for the finale, of course. Improwise says, great walkthrough. Thanks, I hope you really enjoyed it. Did I miss you turning on PC mode and disabling clear type? In fact, in that video, you did. PC mode, I will cover in a little bit, but if you want to do clear type, there's a little bit of controversy around this. Some people say OLED televisions don't need clear type. I did this myself and I actually found the image quality to be less than what I wanted. So I turned that stuff back on. I think personally it looks better with that turned on, but your mileage may vary. I will have the instructions down below. It's a relatively complex process and I can tell you professionally, anytime you're dealing with Microsoft, it always hurts. It always hurts. Now to actually turn on PC mode for your input, you have to go to your television, you have to bring up the home dashboard, click settings, click settings again, select the input icon next to the input that is coming from your PC and then select PC computer. And that is actually how you turn on PC mode for that input. It is almost as convoluted as some of the other things that manufacturers make us go through. Please, somebody teach these people some UX design. As I mentioned, these questions actually come from the comment section of the previous videos. If you have further questions that I'm not addressing today, please feel free to ask down below in the comment section. Myself or another member of the community will likely engage with you and try to get you the answer to your particular question. If a lot of people have the same question though, hey, you might end up in another one of these videos. The topic of ergonomics is the third item that I'm going to cover today. Now, ergonomics is extremely important to your gaming performance because if you cannot physically endure a gaming session or if you feel very poorly afterwards, chances are you're going to not be able to game as long as you want. And I mean that both in the sense of a session and how long in your life you're going to be able to. Jajal Latamer said, I read that the Ergotron HX monitor mount can fit the CX48, barely. Expensive though. 
Now this is very, very true. I can attest to the expensiveness of the Ergotron line. However, I can also attest to their excellent build quality. I've had several of these kind of monitor stands myself over the years. I'm actually using for height adjustability, the Viso, Viso, one of those names, I haven't heard it pronounced, line of television mounts designed to fit on top of a desk. That allows me to adjust the height of the screen. And if you see in the videos, I have a slight tilt as well, the bottom being closer than the top. Now that is for eye comfort. You want essentially the monitor to sit somewhat at an angle away at the top and for the eyes to naturally fall on the screen so that you're not straining or, or anything like that. Jablo says, feels perfectly, honestly, totally immersive. I play sitting at around 85 centimeters from it, that's about 35 inches, and I found that that is the sweet spot for FPS and others. That was a conversation between two of the members in the comment section, basically talking about the different kind of games and how far they needed to sit back. Now, I would suggest about 90 centimeters, that's about four feet, that's about the distance that you want to be. Now, another way you can test this is simply stick out your hand, and if you can touch the monitor, you are, too close, so you need to scoot just a little bit further back. If you're trying to use this on a desk, please be aware that this unit weighs about 33 pounds or 15 kilograms. That's additional weight that's gonna sit directly on your desk and you are going to need a mount that is just as strong. Speaking of mounts, people have been looking at articulating arm stands as well. Back to that Ergotron. The television, as I mentioned, does have quite a bit of weight. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the arm mechanism is capable of supporting that. When you mount something like this, you don't want it to be too bouncy, bouncing up and down. Additionally, the tilt mechanism at the end can become droopy. And when you're mounting something that is so important like this, you don't want a droopy tilt. Wait, what did you say? Uh, never mind. HDMI 2.1 came up several times Quite honestly, they could make this entire thing easier. Unlike the fiasco that has become USB-C, HDMI has been a standard that's been around for a longer time, and most people have some kind of HDMI cable in their house. However, the newer standard of HDMI does require you to have faster bandwidth and higher output in order to actually get all of the awesome features that this television provides. That means you are going to have to search for cables that are specifically designed to carry up to 48 gigabits of data. You see, there's numerous cables that are out there that are labeled Ultra HD, 4K HD, Ultra 4K. None of those are the ones you're actually looking for. Speaking of all of the features, Sir John Smith III reports are coming in that the LG CX is not able to do 4K HDR 120 with a 444 full RGB resolution. Some say a firmware issue. I'm not sure I might return my quote unquote monitor. Now this issue has been investigated. LG has said that they are going to be releasing a firmware update and they did so with the CX9 not too long ago. I did check before this video on on LG's website. I did not see the update for the firmware. If it is up there, please comment down below as a lot of people are going to be impacted by this issue. DF Nightmare says, I think it does 10-bit, but not 12-bit. But because it's a 10-bit panel, it doesn't matter because you can't take advantage of the full 12 bits, as I understand it. I believe he is absolutely correct. The last time I recorded a video on this television, I was not sure the bit rate of the panel itself. It is 10 bit, which means you certainly don't need a full 48 gigabit connection. The 40 that does come with the television is capable of supporting 10 bit with all of the other bells and features turned on, which is exactly what you want. Lastly, Ar <laughs> Lastly Alex Arsenot. <laughs> okay, I get it. That's pretty good. <laughs> the MSI, RTX 3090 is NVIDIA's newest graphics card meant for 4K and 8K gaming and color grading. If it has the new HDMI 2.1 support, which no other graphics cards have had up to this point, make it possible to game at 100 to 120 hertz in 4K, and that is absolutely true. Additionally, the RX 6800 XT, not the regular, and the RX 6900 from AMD will have HDMI 2.1 support and should be capable of over 100 frames per second 
in 4K. Radux says, helpful video, thank you. Well, you are quite welcome. That is exactly what I'm all about, the grain tech trying to improve your gaming performance. I bought one of these a month ago as my main computer monitor and I'm loving it. Quick question, I noticed you keep a static background up. Are you concerned about burn in from this? I've been paranoid and have been just using a black background, but I'm wondering if that's a huge concern for those of us who are using it as a monitor. Additionally, Overkill1141 says, I will get it and I did so much rechecking and research and burn in has become less of an issue over time. And I keep talking about that even though I don't have it, but I will get it and I will play Call of Duty like all day long. So hopefully no mini map on my screen will burn in. OLEDs have been notorious for burn-in for quite some time, including my favorite PS4, PS5, PC headset, the SteelSeries Arctis Wireless Pro. That display also has OLED and has burned in on two separate units that I have had. What I have found as the best practices, and remember, I've had this television for about a thousand hours, is hide the taskbar and change the content around on a regular basis. I am constantly using this. As I said, this is about a thousand hour TV for me at this point in time, but I use it for every single thing. Web browsing, content creation, listening to music, watching videos, playing video games, productivity, email. And in the areas that would have static content, so think close button, file, menu, the top of a, of a window, those kind of things, I allow the pixel refresher to do its job there. So numerous steps that I take and Ken Arn is right. There is some babysitting here that you need to do for a television as a monitor. But in my case, in my opinion, it is so worth it once you see that OLED image. At the end of this video, I will show you the full color spectrum, red, green, blue, white, and black on this television with a thousand hours of constant PC content. But before we get there, if you need more information on the LG CX 48 inch television, I have a full rundown of the specs that I have used on this television, including how to turn off what I think is an intrusive ad system that quite frankly, I just don't need and don't want because I bought a television. I didn't subscribe to one. And you can check out that video right here. And now, red, green, blue, black, and white.